Thank you very much. So, so before before I, I really start, right? Um, I, I want to I want to show you um, the world as we know it. Okay. Uh, yeah, the video is should be on. <laughs> oh, that that is a new toy, new toy, right? But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll continue. This is the world map as we know it. Familiar. This is something that we've been taught from young, right? And we will carry on using it. But what if I tell you the world map actually looks like this? Uh, it looks a little bit off, right? It looks different from what we are taught. Or, or, or how about this? Down under is no longer down under, it's actually up and above. Right? But, but I, what if I also say that the two maps I've showed you are actually more right than the first map? So, so, so what is wrong with the first map? Okay, so we'll just go through a couple of points, you know. Africa is actually 14 times larger than Greenland. But actually, if you look at the map, the first map is actually about the same size. Totally wrong. Right, okay. Brazil is actually five times larger than Alaska. But yet, on the map itself, it's larger than Brazil. So on and so forth. And you, and you will actually see a lot of points coming up. But the real question here is, why are we still using the first map? Uh, well, actually, the answer is I don't know. So the point here is this. Uh, if you don't learn anything after this, at least you know the, that the world map that you looked at <laughs> is wrong. <laughs> right. so, but but uh, seriously, seriously, what I'm hoping to say today is, is really about uh, offering a different perspective. Right? A, a different perspective, and, and hopefully you will be able to open your hearts a little bit Right and see what the what comes after this, right? Anyway, I'll I'll introduce myself. I hope you can see this. Yeah. Introduce myself, uh, and uh, the book that we have actually written is called Project You. It's the the, the tagline is Living a Determined Life. Uh, we are lucky enough to be on the Amazon bestseller, right? For personal transformation and self development, uh, we have also been awarded the, a small little international award for for uh, independent publishers because actually this is something that we publish ourselves. Um, a decision that we made actually uh, very consciously to do it uh, ourselves because we have a lot of control, right? Uh, so this is uh, me. I'm a Saints boy. I played rugby for a long time, right? So whoever is Saints, uh, then we probably will be able to connect. Uh, uh, this this is actually the Cup Final 1989 where we won the A Division. I got a newspaper for some reason. Saint Andrews boy. Uh, it was actually issued, but the big match was actually RJC was in the semi-finals. We beat them. We, we were still talking about that actually uh, last year with the RJ boys. <laughs> right. So this is also me, right? A different side, uh, family. I've got two kids, my wife. Uh, this, was, this was taken in December. A Star Wars fan, right? Uh, Disneyland, the, the night before the premiere. So the entire night in, in Disneyland, was closed, uh, just Star Wars night. So obviously we had to go there, right? Uh, also crazy football fan, right? Where you will do a lot of things. Um, that's is the other side of me. Um, Hensing would know, right? We are Spurs fans. Um, and this is me also professionally, right? Um, my, my career, I would say is a, a colored, right? Started all the way from when I was very young all the way from selling mobile phones to vacuum cleaners and stuff like that. Uh, went on to IBM, started my own business because I couldn't take authority, you know, so I had to be the authority, <laughs> so on and so forth, right? So, um, uh, in between, I, 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 I did this, acquired this, and that was defining. Well, it's not about the education itself, but, but, the, but truly the journey and how it actually lasts to today now to be standing in front of you guys. So I think I'm really honoured to, to be part of this uh, very special alumni. So this is me, uh, different facets, right? But a lot of people who see me normally only see this. Uh, people who see me only see part of this. So let's put it, say that uh, I'm trying to come up with a pretty complete picture of what, what I really am, right? Um, obviously, I didn't do Project U on my own. I have a partner in crime. So his name is Stephen Howe, he's American. Um, he, he stayed in, he was in Singapore for about over 20 years. But how we collaborated on this book, uh, actually it's a series, not just one book. Um, 
was that uh, he is actually in Palm Springs. So we have a big time difference, but we meet every week and we work on things. And it took us about 18 months, right, from the conception of the idea all the way to launch. Uh, but he's, in, he's, uh, he's my, also my mentor, right? Um, author of big books, he's very much into leadership. So if, any, and if anybody, any one of you is looking for a top 100 global SEO writer, he is one of them, right? So he is actually pretty sought after. So why Project U? Um, let's, let's put it this way. A couple of years back, there was a, 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 some personal transformation. Right. I, I, I decided that, that I'm, I need to refresh myself, I need to do a lot of things differently. And, and I want to work on something. So why the, why the name Project U? Actually, it's very simple. Because the best project that you ever work on is you. Most of us don't really think about that. Right? But if there is one thing that you want to really want to work on, is you want to work on yourself. So today's, going back to today's topic, it's really about the roadmap to authentic success. Well, uh, I think first of all, we have to define very simply what is authentic success, right? Uh, it is success as you define it, not by anything else, not by anyone else, not by society, not even by your parents, right? It's really about you and how you define it. Again, a lot of times, we, we don't really think about it. We don't really think about uh, what is success that has defined by you, right? Simply because we, we, we are busy with our lives, right? Uh, we go through life as it is. We live day by day, we live week by week. But at the end of the year, at the end of two years, five years, 10 years, you don't really have, um, you, don't re you just walk. You don't exactly know where you're going sometimes. I mean, I, I must admit, um, a large part of my first part of my life was like that, right? You, you get into situations, you work at it, you, you want to go, you, you want to achieve a certain goal, but you don't really have a definitive answer of what really success is. So, it is something that you re really have to sort of define, but uh, very often you have to muddle through as well. So the first question is, I think when, when we look at this, we have to think about what is life really made up of? Right? So, we, in order to explain this, we, 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 we break this down into seven elements. And the first element is really about the, the personal life. Um, I, I like there's a very good explanation about the, this professor. He, uh, he wants to explain to his class right, what, what is life all about. Right? And, he, and he took out a, a very large jar. He took out a very large jar. And they put it right in front, and of the jar, right? Um, he, he he put a couple of big balls into the jar, and it's all filled up to the brim, right? So he asked the class, "Is this jar full?" Then he said, "Yes, of course. I mean, it's right to the top, right? Right to the top." Then he, from the bottom of the drawer, he he took out another large number of marbles, and he started pouring in. Of course, because the large balls are, are pretty. Uh, spaced apart and the ball stuck, the small little marbles got going in. Then the student said, well, you know, you got to be kidding me, <laughs> right? So, okay, so he asked again, is this full? So the students got, got smart. Some said, okay, you know, maybe that's full. Maybe, some say maybe not full, right? But anyway, in, in any case, he took out another barrel of sand, start pouring in, and it started going in between the cracks, right, of the marbles and the big balls. Right, and he, he put right in front and said, he said, this is your life. He said, okay, the students are puzzled. What is this about the life? He said, within your life, in your life, there are only that number of big balls that is really important to you. And what are they? Oh, of course, that has to be defined by you. And the other things, are, of course, the, the smaller little marbles are the things that you will work on day by day, um, things that you do, right? And the small little the sand are the things that are not important, but that fills up your life, right? So the thing is here is this, if you start pouring out everything, and you start pouring sand in first, there's absolutely no way you can start putting in the bigger balls into the jar, into your life, right? So you have to think about, from the perspective, uh, perspective 
It's really about a lesson, right? On, on what are your priorities? And what, your, what are your priorities determine the, the very personal life? Um, this, this phase is, uh, I like this very much, it's simply because it's actually quite easy to be you, because you are you, right? But on the other hand, the contradiction here is, it's actually one of the hardest things is to be you, because you are torn by pressures, whether it's internal or whether it's external, whether it's with family, or whether it's a society, or whether it's it, the, how the way the society looks at you. So, so in a lot of times, we, we tend to give in. We tend to give in to pressures, right? Well, sometimes obviously nothing wrong with it because if, if it's something that you have to conform with uh, family and things like that, it's, it's, it's understandable, right? And that's what makes us human as well. But Steve Jobs said something which is, I, I felt was um, very meaningful. He said, uh, your time is limited. Don't waste it trying to live somebody else's life. And moreover, everybody else is taken. So you have your own life. So you have to live out something that you define, something that, that is meaningful and that, that is something, a life that you can live, live through. So that is very much about personal life. Um, professional life. Um, I think the professional life, I think, is, is we're all professionals. We spend a lot of time uh, with our work. So I, I, would, I would say that our, uh, our careers is like uh, trying to find uh, the correct bed, right? Because if you spend eight hours, of, uh, eight hours a day sleeping in your bed, you will want to find a, one of the best beds, the, comf the bed that's very comfortable to you, right? So, so I think um, you will also want to have a very successful career. Mark Sutherland said, uh, he's, by the way, he's an uh, he's, um, Olympic gold medal coach. There are th a couple of elements that makes a successful career. I think the first element is very obvious. You've got to enjoy what you do. Because if you're going to be doing that for eight hour, 10 hours a day, you better enjoy what you do. If not, you know, you're, you're, you're just going to be miserable. The next thing, of course, is you have to be productive as well. Whether it's productive with... Uh, uh, in terms of financials, to be able to support your family, to be able to, to um, um, do the things that you want to do. And the last thing actually is the most difficult, something meaningful. And I can tell you very quite, quite frankly, in the first part earlier of my life, I, I enjoyed what I did, I was productive. But it wasn't really meaningful. Right? That was part of the reason why I had that transformation on, on my own. Um, where I started doing, I was lucky, like I say, I was lucky where I managed to put all this away and start afresh, right? And, and part of the starting afresh is really about Project U. Um, so I think when, when we look at the careers that we are on now, I, uh, I'm, I'm very sure that the careers that you have is vastly different, right? Very different from um, each other. But I think if you look at the top 10 jobs today, chances are they won't exist in the next 10 years, right? So I think it's very important to be able to transform yourself um, in terms of uh, your professional life, to be able to adapt. And Darwin said this, now it's not the strongest uh, or the fastest that uh, will survive, but it's the ones that are with the ability to adapt. Right, so that's a professional life, family life. Very simple, right? Um, I think if we take away everything that we have here, right? Uh, especially, let's say for example, me. If we take away everything that I have, careers, cars, everything, but if I only have my personal relationship with my family, a very good relationship, I think that I can define it as a very good success. And, and I think that was the cornerstone of the transformation as well. Um, I used to do hi-fi. <laughs> I used to do hi-fi. So I, I did it for about nine years, right? And I, I, I operate a very unique um, uh, model where I only open on a Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m. So imagine running a business, right? 
only only open on Saturday two to six, right? If you want to come on a weekday, I'm not open, right? We, or, or alternatively, if you want, you can we, we can call on uh, do a what I call a CCIC concept, meaning customer come, I come. You make an appointment with me, and I will come to the shop and I'll entertain you, right? So so going through the transformation, and I I, I had a very long thought about trying to close the business now and what should I do, whether should I do it or not. Because it's Saturday 2 to 6, right? So, so I, one day, I, um, I just asked my two kids, you know, what if daddy tells you that 2 to 6 on a Saturday, I'll be with you? And all I did was just, yay! I think that, that in itself was the confirmation that I needed to do it, right? So right now, I must say, a lot of times, I, I center my life around my family. So the career, my career is secondary, right? But the center is really about the family. Mental and emotional life. Well, think of the mental health, think of mental life as the bus driver, right? And, and you are the bus, right? The body is the bus. And you're, the mental health is the bus driver. You wouldn't want the bus driver to be emotional. You want you want the bus driver to be suicidal, right? You want the bus driver to be positive. You want the bus driver to be careful. You want the bus driver all the attributes that um, uh, um, of a healthy mental person, right? And it's very important over here to to think about to have positive thinking as well, right? And I I, I like this phrase as well. Henry Ford and is is more over hundred years old, right? Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. So, it's really about what you can do or what you can achieve. It really depends on what your inner voice says. And you decide what you want to do. Now, we talk about the bus driver. Now, we talk about the bus itself. Right? Right? You, in order to reach from point A to point B, you must be healthy. Right? So, I think... Um, a lot of people say that you know you go to healthcare, take care of things, but actually medicine is not healthcare. It's actually sick care. You only go to the hospital or you only take medicine when you're sick, right? So the real healthcare is what? The food that you eat and the exercise that you do. So that is real healthcare. And and is, that is something that we all would like to have, which is hope. If you have health, you have hope because you're, you have the ability to carry out all the things that you want to do with a healthy bus driver and a healthy bus as well. So I think that is very important. And the next element is spiritual life. Again, something that we don't really think about, right? Well, I'm not talking about uh, religion here. We're not talking about religion, right? We're talking about the inner self. The, the, the little voice inside you that tells you to do the things that you do. The, the soul that defines you, who you are. Right? Um, to put it another way, is that instead of thinking that you have a body with a soul, think of it as, you are actually a soul that has a body. So it's a bit different. Right? Because the soul will tell you that defines who you are and the body and the mental health is just a, it's just will simply facilitates what you want to do, what your goals are, what your dreams are. Right? And last but not least, interconnected life. Interconnected life is there's a theory called six degrees, right? You can actually connect to anybody in, in this in the world within six degrees, within six persons actually. Right? But I think we 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 have to realize that we are actually one planet and we are actually one people as well. So we're not talking about the, you know, the, the Chinese race, the Malay race, but there's such thing, something called the human race. So I think it's very important to, to, to be able to connect uh, to each other. Uh, if you are, uh, I'm, okay, there are a few couple of ladies, but if you're from CHID, then you will know what this is, right? Um, the gifts given to you are for others. That's Father Bari, the founder of CHIJ, right? And that's about five hundred years ago. So I, I, I took I, I, I took this of a picture from my school girl, my girl's uh, school hall, and that is very meaningful. 
So what you have, the gifts that you have, is actually not for you. So how are you going to give it to others? So that is the seven elements of life. And they are all relevant, right? Unfortunately, there's a battle going on. And you need to balance all of these. Okay, so right now, this is really about the seven elements of, our, of life. So I think the next question here, a little bit more interesting, is what do we need to do to become successful, right? So I, 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 there are actually three ingredients to success, very simple ingredients, right? The first one actually is talent. You, you've, got to be, you've got to be good at what you do. That makes sense, right? You, you, if you, Usain Bolt can't be Usain Bolt if he doesn't have talent. So it must be in him. Uh, you can call it God's grace, you can call it uh, no DNA, whatever you call it, but that's talent. I also believe that a person can be multi-talented. If you try to define what does Leonardo da Vinci do, what is he? He's a painter, he's a sculptor, he's an inventor. Right? So, so in all of us, it's very important to say, oh, he's good at certain things, he's good at certain things. And which is the reason, part of the reason why we try to have a multi-dimensional view of a certain person. Right? And, and I truly believe that we are all multi-talented in many ways. The only question here is, is that talent economically viable? <laughs> right, right. I mean, that, that sort of makes sense because if you're David Beckham here in Singapore, that, uh, you probably can't go too far, right? Because the, his mum will probably ask him to go study. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, but I think the point here about being economically viable, that, that is a separate issue altogether, right? And the next ingredient that you, is hard work. You have to put in your hard work. Simple as that. Right? So again, you're going back to Usain Bolt, right? If he knows he's talented but he's lazy, there's no way he's going to be world champion. Simple as that, right? And lastly, I'll call this dumb luck. <laughs> no, but this is very important. Dumb luck is very important, right? Some people call it timing. Some people call it being at the right time and the right place. If you're religious, you probably got God's grace or, you know, faith or whatnot. Which also explains why pe some, some people are very talented some people are very hardworking, but they're not successful because they don't have that luck. So, if we, if we look at all these, what are we in control of? The only, the only thing that we are really in control of is hard work. Well, we are actually in control of our talents as well because you have to discover your talent first because if you don't discover a talent, you're not able, you will not be able to work at it. So the discovery of talent is important. Hard work is critical. But I also believe that you can actually work on dumb luck. Right? Because, like I said, dumb luck sometimes means that you can meet somebody at the right time, particular place. So you have to make yourself available, right? It's like, um, it's like, um, it, it, you know, if you're single, you, know, if you're, you want to get yourself out there, right? If you're single, you want to get yourself out there. You know, you're okay looking, you know, you're, but you got to get yourself, you got to work hard a bit, lah, right? To go to somewhere. But you also need dumb luck, meaning that you have to create opportunities for yourself. So that is exactly what I mean. So three ingredients of success, right? So the journey begins. I did mention self-discovery. That self-discovery, self-awareness. I think that's very important because a lot of times we, we, I'm sure sometimes people ask you, hey, what are you good at? And then you, mm, I don't know. Okay, if you don't know, then who does? I think that's very important. Self-discovery, self-awareness, to ask yourself, what are you good at and what are you made of? And what is your own constitution? And then the journey begins. Let's put this number at 100. So let's say for 100 person, right? How many would do the self-discovery? Say 50, right? The rest, we just won't be bothered, 50. Shift momentum. Actually, shift momentum is very simple. That, to me, is taking the first step. Because you have inertia, right? Because you are doing whatever you're doing. And if you discover something, okay, I need, I'm, I'm pretty good at this, why don't I do this? Then you start thinking, hmm, risky. Should I do it? Fear. No courage. Not brave enough. 
failure. Half of, it, half of the people will drop out, 25. 50, 100 start, 50 will do this self-discovery. Half of it will start. The first step. We are just talking about the first step. Right? So you decided, right, okay, we should ignore inertia, shift the momentum to a different direction. Change of career, for example. Moving forward. Now, moving forward is the hard work part, you know? Because no matter what you do, you got to move forward. Some people say go straight. Actually, no, don't go straight. Go forward. Because the forward path is never straight. And this is where you have to persevere. And this is where you really have to do your hard work and walk the miles, right? Because I think many times we realize that when you walk the miles, you don't see results. But as you walk, you meet somebody, perhaps, right? You, you get a new picture. So working hard here. 25, half of it. We'll put a number 12, let's say 12. Facing challenges. Now, facing challenges is, um, is hard, right? I mean, we all face challenges in our lives, our careers, our marriages, our family, so on and so forth. So what do you do when you face a challenge? So I tell my kids, I don't, I don't prevent my kids from falling down. But I make sure that they get up. They can cry, whatever they want, but they have to get up and move forward. So I think that's what we need to do as well. Whenever we face a challenge, it's okay, right? End of the day, we will, we will always fail somewhere, somehow. But the point here is to come up again and do something differently. Facing challenges. 12. Six. Life's purpose. And this is obviously to be able to find a purpose in what you do. Right? This is not an end goal, obviously. This, this goes skeptical. But I, I mentioned before, we start with 100. Top. Maybe six. So, question here is, it's hard. I mean, it's hard. But every day, we are at some point in this path. We are at some point in this journey. Right? It could be, and I'm talking about different elements, it could be professional, it could be personal, some point somewhere. But you have to decide what you want to do and what you need to do. Right? So this is what we call the Project You Life Journey. So, oh, sorry. The final question here is, so what's the secret? What's the real secret to success? I will, I will just name a couple of failures. Right, Walt Disney, you know, he, he got sacked. <laughs> I don't know whether you know how he's sorry, but uh, he got sacked from uh, for newspapers, right, for lagging of imagination and, you know, it's quite funny, right. He will probably fail in our school, <laughs> right. He dropped out, you know, Einstein. He f failed in eight elections. Failed a thousand, uh, 10,000 times, like Bob, right, and many, many, many other failures. Um, this resonates with me, right? Because um, I, I read about her having a humongous struggle with her faith, right? But she felt she was a failure. Um, but to us, to, our, to us, of course not, right? But, but the point here is, if, if she felt she was a failure and she felt that she was all alone and she was, God wasn't with her, but yet she carried on doing the things she, that she did, I mean, it's, it's amazing, but to, and, and in her own interview, she said she felt herself was a failure, right? Or well, Aung San Suu Kyi, pretty hot news nowadays, right? But she was, uh, again, house arrest over 20 years. Gandhi, ridiculed by, of all people, Winston Churchill. So, they fail big time, big time. And I sincerely believe they are no different from you and me. They are no different. So so question here is why why did they succeed? And and why? And how? 
actually, right, it goes right down to one simple, very simple factor. They live a determined life. When I say determined life, um, we talk about grit. We talk about not accepting failure. We talk about having a purpose in life. We talk about um, being able to move when, to move mountains, right? Actually, this is not just something that we say, right? But it's actually well researched. Um, I, I urge you to go and read to 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 watch this later on. Is Angela Duckworth? Um, it's on YouTube, right? Uh, she she did on a couple of TED talks, right? And it's called Grit. If you can really uh, have a look at this, and her 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 research revolves around what is the determining factor for people who are successful. And and to be honest with you, hugely influence us in terms of uh, because they are they are empirical, quantitative. Right, and they found out that regardless of race, regardless of background, regardless of whether you're rich or you're poor, regardless of um, the the various differences that you have, one determining factor determines whether the person is going to be successful or not, and that's great. How determined you are in doing the things that you want to do. Doesn't matter about everything else, all the other factors. It's just pure grit. Right. So, living a determined life is something that I believe, sincerely believe that we can all achieve. It only, believe, it only needs you to start this particular journey, to look back in yourself, what are you made of? And, and, um, Sometimes people ask me, hey, I'm, I'm 40 over years old, no, is that, so I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still doing this new startups and stuff like that. And look, what's the point? Um, but I think if you, I'm sure you know KFC, right? KFC, I don't know whether you guys know the story, but uh, Colonel Sanders, right? Yeah, how, how, do you know how old when he started KFC? 60 over years old. And, and when he was successful, he was well over. 60, 70 years old. So I think age is never a factor. So the other factor, of course, is the burning desire. Um, another lady, I, 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 I was watching it the other night, 64-year-old, um, she did the US to Cuba swim, 100 miles, right, in 54 hours. 64 years old grandma. It's amazing, I mean, we, six, 64. What excuse do we have, <laughs> right? So the results are pretty clear, right? There's all the different elements of life is really about what you want to achieve. Rich personal life, fulfilling professional life, a very good family life, so on and so forth. And this is what we will define as authentic success. Because all these are defined by you. All these are determined by you. The only thing that you really need to do is to get on board, start doing things, and be determined. I, I, I would like to end off the night uh, with this. Actually, I have this on top of my desk. right? I, 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 I think one day I just... One of those things that I just did, oh, okay, what am I doing? I just paste it up there, right? What am I going to do? What am I doing to change the world? So I have uh, two daughters. My younger one is uh, currently now 10. So one night, uh, she came in and, and said, Daddy, so why do you want to change the world? Well, that, she, that stomped me. <laughs> that stomped me. Why do I want to change the world? For the better, I hope, you know, <laughs> for the better. Then I realized the simplest answer is because I can. And we all can, in our own ways. We all can. So I think we, we, shall not, we shall not underestimate the power of the self. We all can. So with this, I think, thank you very much. Um, done. So if you want, you have a read. This is the website, projectulife.com.